All right, all right, we're good, we're good. Whoops, so we thinking about peace today. <laughs> if I can hold on to the pulpit and stand here. <laughs> a priest and a rabbi were riding in the rabbi's car, and they were zipping along, and lo and behold, they got into an accident, and the car was totaled. It was just wrecked. The two of them got out and dusted off and said, we're all right. This must, this is a miracle. This must mean that God wants us to work together for peace in the world, to, to get along, to cooperate, and to, to build up God's world. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And they looked in the car, and lo, there was a bottle of wine that was not destroyed. Isn't that something? The whole car was wrecked and everything in it, but the wine and the priest and the rabbi. So they said, we should celebrate. We've survived this, and we've got this mission from God. So they popped the cork, and the rabbi handed it to the priest, and he drank his half of the bottle and handed it back to the rabbi, and the rabbi corked it. And the priest said, well, wait, 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 aren't we going to celebrate? Well, sure, we'll celebrate. I'll be glad to do that with you as soon as the officer gets here to finish his report. So <laughs> no, I'm not sure that's a good tone to set for the peace of these two men. <laughs> We'll have to see how that works out someday. <laughs> the the peace, uh, peace be with you is a powerful little phrase today, the peace of Christ. When I was in the 70s, when I grew up, it was cool to go around and go, hey, peace, man, remember that? The peace movement and all kinds of peace marches going on. There were peace movements. Uh, there were, in history, throughout history, peace pipes that were smoked to make peace between people. We have peace talks with our nations. We could use a few of those today. Peace, if we define it, or how might you define it, I guess is the question. Maybe a lack of conflict, um, a lack of fear of being afraid, an absence of hostility. Peace is often brought about by some level of compromise because of conversations which happened, which means there was a lot of listening and speaking going on. Some very divergent views sometimes can be brought together by peace talks, it's hard work. Not easy to give in. Thoughtful listening and communicating can bring understanding that leads toward peace. I think of peace this morning on some summer days, which if you're like me after this past week, we're kind of longing for the sun coming up with a blue sky instead of a gray one. Maybe an early morning mist when all is calm and you're standing by water and it's like a mirror, <clears throat> just glorious little mist. The birds starting to sing. There's a peace as the day begins. It comes only by God's gift of creation. It's the kind of peace I'm thinking of today. Sometimes sermons are ended. Are ended. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life eternal. That passes all understanding part is what I'm trying to get at today. It's beyond words, the kind of peace that Jesus intends for us to experience. And if you're like me, it's not every day or always that I do. In Islam, the word for peace is salam. Muslims are followers of the Islam religion who promote peace as Christians do, as do Buddhists and Hindu and Jewish folks on the face of our earth. I have a good friend from seminary who says shalom, the Jewish word for peace, which is more than just a lack of, of fighting, but it's actually an indwelling of that God's peace that I was talking about sharing after the prayers today. We need peace in Syria and Iraq and Iran and in Eastern Bloc countries and in Africa and in America for all the shooting that goes on. We need peace in our homes. Jesus today is talking about a sense of a wholeness and of a being that is all, all is right with the world. A calmness that only comes as God's gift. A harmony, if you will. In our hymnal is a hymn 785. It's called, When Peace Like a River. This is where I want to go as deep as I can with this topic because this hymn has always touched me deeply. It was Horatio Spafford who wrote it when he was 43 years old in Chicago. He and his wife had just lost one of their children. They had five children, a boy and four girls, and one of them, the, ch the boy, had died. And then there was the Chicago fire, which burnt everything that he owned, and they lost every single possession except themselves and the clothes on their back. And he felt that they needed a break, so they were going to England to visit family, extended family there and friends. 
And he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship ahead of him and said, I'll follow in a few days as he tidied up the business at hand. When the wife and four daughters had left, they were out to sea several days and they hit another ship. And in 12 minutes, more than 200 people drowned from this accident. His wife was the only one who survived. He went over to England and on his way over there he had gotten word that she was the lone survivor and he penned this great hymn. When peace like a river attends my soul and sorrows like sea billows roll. Have you ever been out on the ocean? Watch those sea billows rolling. Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say it is well with my soul. Oh goodness, now we're getting real. A song like that to come out of a tragedy like that. What a gift it is for us today and what a gift this peace of Christ is for all who believe. It's for all those who do follow Christ, especially in the middle of hardships or struggles or conflicts or when you're like me, you're heading down a road and occasionally you'll run across those orange and white boards all the way across the road and it says, stop, detour. Does life ever do that to you? You have to take a turn and go a whole new way. Shoot, I'm going to be late. I don't know where I am. How can I get there? Why, did they, why don't they get this stuff done after I get through? <laughs> Anybody been on 88 in the last year and a half? <laughs> oh, man. Eternity must be here, I guess, because that's what it seems like <laughs> in that project. But life makes us take detours. And so Jesus is on this path today when he tells the story. So he gets it when he gives us this story today. He's on a path of no return, right? In the scripture story in John 14 this morning, he's on his way to the cross. His best friends are going to betray him. People who hate him are going to string him up. And here in the midst of this, he says, peace be with you. He knows what Horatio Spafford felt. He knows what you felt and what I feel sometimes when the whole world seems to be crumbling around us and the detours pop up and things happen that we do not like. Jesus gives this peace not only for himself but to you and to I and to all who believe in him. And it's a gift. And surprise, it comes best of all, at least in my experience, when I take my life and, you know, I just love holding on to that wheel, don't you? And I turn it over to God and say, you drive. You, you be in control. Help me to follow your will, Lord. That's not easy to do. That is when I turn those things over to God, my outcomes that I want to have happen, the control that I wish I had, the things I could make people do, ooh, I would have a great time with that. And yet, it's God says, when you turn it over to me, put it in my hands, that's when you might come to know something about peace. Now, it doesn't mean you give up your responsibilities and your place in the world and the things that you are to do, but it means that the outcome is God's. It means that we admit there are limits to what we can and cannot do in this world. And we as Americans like to think of ourselves as a no-limit people, a 24-7 driving, hard driving, hard working, we're going to make it happen come hell or high water, right? That's who we are as a people. But finally, if you are like me and you weary of carrying the load of the earth on your shoulders like the image of Atlas, you finally say, you let go. And you put it into God's hands, myself and my loved ones, all the matters of my life. And as Pastor David Lowe says, to put your fortunes and your future into God's hands, bingo. There is God's answers. There is God's answer, peace. Peace I give to you. Peace as the world cannot give. It's not available anywhere else. And if you're like me, I've looked at a lot of places for it. Still do. And that's when I need to take a detour, head back toward God. The world's ways are like this. You earn your way, right? Survival of the fittest. Look out for number one. You compete. Listen to the speeches from our politicians this year. And I'm not taking sides on either one. Listen to them. There's nobody talking about the ways of God. Jesus gives freely this gift of peace with no expectation of return. Whoa. His only hope is to re that you and I would receive it with open hearts and open hands and then willingly give it to the next person that we meet on our journeys each and every day. 
We can't earn it. It's his gift. That's when we come across another hymn. These hymns are full of sermons. What a friend we have in Jesus. I think that's why we like those old ones. We can't wear them out. And I know our young people appreciate those. Oh, what peace we often for what forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry all of, of our everything to God in prayer. Remember? What a hymn. What a hymn. So when we share the peace today, we're not just saying, hey, good morning, nice to see you. Oh, boy, I like your sweater or whatever. This is about something far bigger. The peace of God that passes all the understanding of the world is my gift and yours. And we say, let it begin here and now between us so that when we leave this place, this world that hungers for the peace of Christ, it's starving for the peace of Christ. Just look around. Receive it as God's gift and share it and multiply it like the loaves and the fishes where there is a little, boom, all of a sudden there's a lot. Only by God's math. How often do you feel this? That no matter what happens to you, in your corpuscles, in your cells of your body, you feel peace in your toes through the Spirit of God, through God's gift of life and love. It is God's gift. It is for you, it is for I. Might you receive it today with an open heart and open hands and share it with everyone you meet. Thank God. And, and okay, may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life eternal. Amen.